Welcome to the history Welcome to the culture Welcome to the community that dreams and achieves Living in change For better tomorrow Welcome to the Eunice Mala Show Today we have an interesting program. We're going to start the program with a gentleman by the name of Bandak Kwit. He's a tax preparer and he's been preparing taxes for a number of years now. And he does my tax personally. Whenever, you know, it's April and stuff and the tax returns come back from work, I usually take him to him because he's not only trustworthy, but he's very efficient. So let's go ahead and look at the professional life of a tax preparer. Uh, my name is Bernard Kwith. I want to say thank you for coming over here to, uh, uh, so that I can talk about, we can, I can discuss about uh, who I am and what I do here. Uh, I came from South Sudan. Uh, that's, that is where I was born. I was born and raised there. Uh, I left South Sudan uh, during the uh, uh, the war between South and North, uh, uh, left for Ethiopia uh, and stayed there uh, for, for many years in the refugee camp and went to school there and moved from Ethiopia to the United States and I've lived here in the United States for uh, 13 years here in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I. Um, I started going to school in 2004. Uh, went to Metropolitan Community College. I did my two-year college degree and transferred to University of Nebraska Omaha, uh, where I studied um, uh, business uh, uh, with majors in finance and banking, with uh, uh, some accounting classes. I graduated in 2009 with a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, majors in finance and banking, double majors actually. What inspired me to, to be a tax preparer, uh, you know, it was a pressure, I mean, uh, from my community. There were so many people come to me and say, well, uh, if you learn how to do taxes, why don't you do it? And, and, and I have a lot of people from my community from South Sudanese community that would like to to see someone talk to them in their own uh, uh, language uh, so they can understand better what the tax preparer is doing when they come for to prepare the tax return. So uh, with that uh, uh, request, so I decided to do uh, to be a tax return preparer. So what I did was. Uh, I know that you can't just go uh, and do it. You have to apply uh, uh, through the IRS to be a tax return preparer. So that's what I did. So I went on and applied for uh, what they call EFIN, this, this electronic filing uh, uh, a number. You can get that through the IRS. Uh, you know, went online applied for it, and there are some other requirements that is required. Uh, there is a lot of uh, scrutiny, like background checks and all this, in order to, uh, to get the number. So I went through all the, those uh, kind of uh, uh, background checks, and I was able to get the, uh, the numbers. Tax return here in the U.S., it's a law. If, if, you, if you work, you are required to file a tax return. Uh, I cannot go deeply because I'm not a, 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 a tax advisor or anything, but I'm just a tax return preparer. So I cannot go into deep, deep, deep thinking, but I can just uh, type basis on some little, little things. Yes, it is a law. If you work, you have to, you have to file your tax return. Uh, 
there is a, a time frame that uh, required by a federal uh, government and the state government in order to file a tax return, uh, starting from January to February 15th. So this is the time frame where you can file your tax return within that time. If you think you can you can be late on filing your tax return, you make sure that you have to file it an extension. Uh, it is always there. Uh, if you think you will be out of country, you can file uh, an extension. Uh, uh, the, 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 the federal government will allow you to come and file your tax return if you file an, ext an, an extension for whatever reason that you have. Uh, but uh, everyone is required to file their tax return by April 15th. That is the deadline for everyone. And it is a law, as I said earlier. So if, if you think you make money or you work, you have to report your income to the government. So the government knows that uh, uh, what you did, uh, is, uh, and, uh, you follow the law, basically. So don't think that if you work and you want to just throw your W-2 away and not file it, uh, that the, the government, the IRS would not know. The IRS will know because whoever you work for, they will report your income to IRS. By January to March, most people, they, they, they file the tax return in, in South Sudanese community. South Sudan and Sudanese community in general here because a lot of people, they want to uh, file their, their tax return right away after they receive their W-2. The people that come to my office here file their tax returns. Uh, I get busy during the month of, uh, of February because most W-2s, they come out in uh, late, late January. So as soon as the people get their uh, W-2s, they come in uh, right away. Most people, I prepare their tax return in the month of February. And I get some few people that come in late, uh, in March. Uh, by April, uh, it's just one or two or three, few clients, few customers come in for preparing their tax return. Uh, these are the people who have come and told me that they have lost their W-2. They have to call their, their, uh, their employer uh, in order to, uh, to get another W-2. Uh, and, and this kind of thing. Uh, yeah, these are the most cases that I, uh, I prepare in, in the month of uh, April. Being a tax preparer, sometimes there are so many challenges because uh, some people uh, don't understand how uh, the system works. Uh, some people, when, 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 when they, uh, they come in, they expect uh, uh, maybe more refund. Then you have to explain to them that uh, uh, how the, uh, the calculation and all this and the, how the system works. So, uh, and I have other, some other cases that are really uh, challenging also. You will find uh, some people that works, that have worked in three or four different places in, 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 in the year. So when, it, when, they, when they get their W-2s, maybe they forget that they have uh, other jobs that they have not received their W-2s. Maybe they, they come in with one or two and, and, and leave behind one or or two other W-2. So for me, I, I, I cannot know. When they come to me, they turn, I have to collect uh, whatever they have. I ask them, actually, if they have other jobs that they, they haven't got their W-2s yet. When they tell me they don't have, and a week later they come back and say, well, ooh, yeah, I forgot uh, another W-2. So I have to go back and file an amendment and file an amendment because when you do an amendment you have to make you have to uh, do as paper uh, you cannot electronic electronically file it uh, after you already file a return these are the these are some challenges that uh, I have but it is my job so I have to I have to do uh, 
or what I can in order to help uh, my customer or clients. You know, our office is located in, on uh, 26 Channel Road uh, uh, by Nile Global Grocery Store. Uh, it's actually 26, 19 and a half Channel Road. So that's where, that's where our, our office is located. If you would like to come and, and prepare your tax return, you are welcome. Um, our, our fee is decent. Uh, not, not, not too much, we don't charge that much, we charge less because that is one of our business strategy is to, you know, is to uh, elevate our, our client uh, as well as, uh, you know, uh, make our uh, uh, income or revenue uh, to the uptrend. It was not long ago that I uh, completed my master's degree in nursing. And I would say that my mom played a big role in my educational process because from a young age, she's taught me the importance of education, the ability of it being able to not only provide a source of income, but also providing an independent and sustainable life. And because of that, I've often strived to not only be independent, but to go for goals that um, might be deemed by others unattainable. So my mom really has been a catalyst in not only impairing me, but molding me to the woman that I am today. So here I am interviewing my mom, and her name is Sarah Moray. And then this lady right here is my wonderful mom. <laughs> Sarah Moray. <laughs> mom, can you say hi? Hi to all of you. Oh, okay, that's great. So as you know, today is my graduation. I'm graduating. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> thank you, thank yeah. you. Yes, I know from a young age you placed such great emphasis on education. How come you did that? Well, the first the person who is all knowing, omniscient, is God himself. He made us in his image, and the image is the brain. We have to be like him. And the person, the next person who inspired me very much is Uncle General Joseph Lago. He, all, he will always quote to me that the first African to get a, a degree is a South African called Dr. Egre, who said, when you educate a man, you educate one individual. But when you educate a woman, you educate the whole nation. And he wanted me so much, all his daughters, to be teachers. And so now, my child, you are getting your master's. And it is your responsibility to pass it on to the rest of the whole of South Sudanese, both men and women, what you have learned. Yeah, that is, that is very good. That is very good, Mom. You mentioned that Uncle Lagu really placed great emphasis on education, education. really um, told you that you need to strive for you know, excellence. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and also Uncle John, all of them, all Sudanese, they love education. Mm -hmm. But because we are just right near the Mediterranean and the Red Sea and the access to the River Nile, we had too many invasions who prohibited us from education. We had this education when we were in Egypt. We built the pyramids. We built a beautiful civilization. The people love education. Mm -hmm. Now I know that, uh, where did you get your degree in and where did you go to school? I had, because of uh, wars in Sudan, started my schooling in South Sudan. Then I was brought as a child to Uganda, where I finished my primary school and got to high school. And then I went and Get, got my Bachelor of Science degree in Baraton University in Kenya. And what was the emphasis in your degree? The emphasis in general science of agriculture. It is because Sudan is, was having too much trouble of the wars on both sides. SPLA on one side, the 
Khartoum government on the other side and the farmers and the civilians were suffering people were dying of hunger during the modern times when places like America people are suffering from obesity and they have to jog you know to keep the weight down and our own people are dying so I thought well uh, I was first taking major in English and then I decided to go to the agriculture field so that maybe someday I may be able to help it some. Mm -hmm. Now, um, when we look at South Sudan, there are some communities or tribes that prohibit um, girls from going to school, or um, there's a stigma attached to girls who are educated. Um, what would you tell those girls um, who do want to get an education, but there are a lot of factors within their surrounding that uh, prevents them from doing so? or they feel like they have low self-esteem and they're not intelligent enough? Sudanese, especially South Sudanese, are victims of invasions of foreigners. There were too much rapes, stealing of children and selling them as slaves. So the parents, the best option for them, because girls are weak and you know, as Uncle Joseph said, the bodies of girls are delicate, they are precious. So we must not, you know, trade it, trade our bodies. And so the parents kept them home. And then these parents are victims, their daughters became victims. Even they do not, most of them do not allow them to go abroad. They do not allow them to go to school because, you know, it is the foreigners who are raping them and selling them as slaves. And then the parents, you know, they became victims of abuse of their own daughters. And the daughters, uh, the, the most abused victims, you know, trying to keep them home to pro for protection. So that when they get or they married, encourage, they yeah, encourage marriage. And, marriage, you know, because that is the best option. Yeah. Everybody even then here, become even a victim. Even here in the West, you know, mm -hmm. whereby there's that opportunity to get an education, but the emphasis placed on you need to get married. married if you're not yeah. married by a certain age, then mm -hmm. there is something wrong oh, with you. Oh, oh, everybody is just a victim. It is so sad. And how come you did not really try to force me into, or you did not really place great emphasis, okay, Eunice, you need to get married, you need to get married. You tend, you tend to let me do what I need to do, you know? Like, uh, again, the uh, thing goes back to our culture the Nubian culture, South Sudan, Darfur, and uh, uh, Jebel Nuba is the mothers used to be very strong. The mothers were the ones who were appointing the pharaohs. And most of the pharaohs were women. But you know, a lot of men, they like to show up because they are men, so they write books, they put their records on obelix, oh, they did this, they did that. But it, the ones who built the kingdom of Kush were women. And this one, our grandfather, Yakubo Yanga, he believed in, he loved his daughters, even a little more than his own sons. And Uncle Joseph passed on, he would tell, I love you both boys and girls equally. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is very important. important. Yeah. So, because grandfather, Mm -hmm. Yakobo Yanga was a, 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 a pastor, he was a missionary mm -hmm. to the Mongols and to the Dinkas. Mm -hmm. And he, he loved his daughters, he mm -hmm. tried to pass it on, and his sons and daughters tried so to... So what is the important point in this? Is that the men and women are equal, and uncle will say, you can do anything that a man does. Mm -hmm. So I want you to know that, you know, anything that is good, not the wrong one, that a man can do, mm -hmm. you can do it. Mm -hmm. the and this is an are, important message for yeah. the South Sudanese girls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were brain surgeons, mm -hmm. and we were doctors, and we mummified our kings, mm -hmm. and did so many things. In the kingdom of course. Together, in the kingdom of course, by women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the, the women, are they, they don't show off, they don't write, mm -hmm. oh, I did this, I'm Ramses, I did this and that, and I fought. Yeah. No, they were just... Very humble about it. Yeah. yeah, okay. And then, now how about for the uh, young South Sudanese men and boys who uh, do not have the, the father figure 
or do you not have male role models or role models that can encourage them or how about those who are in school but yet sometimes they feel demoralized you know of they feel alone as they go through their educational process what would you tell them i remember when i was in nairobi um, i was talking to not nairobi i we were studying in kenya and then i went back home and then i was telling the people we, we were very very lonely and one young man said very younger than me he said that is good that is opportunity for you to look to God and to look into your own self and study and pray and strive. Your family is good, but sometimes they, are, they distract you there, here and there. So whatever opportunity God put you in, you are alone or you are within family. You know that the genes of Nimrod, the first king in the world, is in you. The genes of the pharaohs are in you. They were not slaves. In fact, the Semites, the, the Romans, the Italians, the Greeks were coming to us for food. You know, they are in your genes. You can strive. And you know, even those who don't have the chance to go to school, we have the genes of business people. You can take one dollar and increase it in legal ways. You can build yourself an empire of businesses, good families. Education is to help you now to build the banks and other things. Yeah, that is but true. nobody must be left behind, whether you're educated or not, as long as you are North or South Sudanese blacks. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is very good. That is very good. So what do you think dad would think about, you know, uh, this day? Oh, he was such a sweet husband. Unfortunately, I'm so addicted to him. You know, he seemed to be alive. i am not been able to get your father. He loved education. He fought for the right of South Sudanese to learn in their languages and in English and in Arabic too, but in English will broaden your horizon, you know. When you come to U.S., President Obama do not know Arabic. But if you know English and you want to explain your point of view on politics or security or so forth, you know, it helps. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he thought education was very important. Very good. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when he's going home, mm -hmm. he will go to the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. yeah. to ask for books. Mm -hmm textbook, exercise books. Mm -hmm. So he would be reading and... No, for the schools. Oh, for the schools? Yeah. He would give the schools yeah, the South Sudan? Yeah, oh. of, of, of his constituency in Irubek. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. when he's going home, he'll tell me. And then there were some people we knew, also in the Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. uh, who are his in-laws, mm -hmm. the Madis, and mm -hmm. then he would also negotiate with them yeah. and with all the Equatorians and the Dinkas. Good. You know, mm -hmm. to help his constituents. Yeah, that is and then good. he will come with his, he had a truck. Mm -hmm. And then he will fill it. They will fill them oh, with okay. the textbooks, mm -hmm. the exercise, pencils, things like that. Then mm he -hmm. will take them home. He did that several times. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that is great. That is great. Uh, is there any last message you'd like to say to the youth of uh, South Sudan? I am so happy. Freedom find you when you are still young. This is your opportunity to tell the Arabs you are also human beings. To tell the whites, to tell all the races and nations in the world, you are still the pharaohs. Rise up and do things. First for yourselves, your families, and for the whole of South Sudan. And remember the Bible said what? That will rebuild the church, will bring him gifts. And God said also, Egypt are us, South Sudanese, Darfur, and Jebelnuba, that he loves us. And when you bring gifts, mm -hmm. it's going to be lots mm -hmm. for God. Mm -hmm. You are going to be very rich, but you need to work for it. Mm -hmm. You will have peace in South Sudan mm -hmm. because God is coming back to you. But you need to work for peace. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you too, Mom. And I really want to thank you. <laughs> 
for making me a strong, independent person. I would not have been where I am today. Is God, I just thank God. Had it not been for you. So thank you very much. I Mom. just thank God and your daddy for giving you to me. Yeah, yeah. And you are so beautiful and you did just like it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you. you. Our queen. Thank you. My last. entertainment tonight we're going to see a performance by the one and only Mr. T Love how the time that we spend together goes by so fast. 28 minutes doesn't seem like it's enough time for us to interact with one another. But we hope that next week you'll tune in and watch another show here on the Eunice Malad Show. Also, we'd definitely love to hear from you. Link us up at uh, the Eunice Malad Show on Facebook or just email us on Yahoo at the Eunice Malad Show at yahoo.com. We'd love to hear from you. If you believe, you can achieve.